Hello friends and welcome. Today we're going to be doing something new that I've never done before. It's going to be a sketchbook tour. And this year was the first year that I participated in Inktober, which is a drawing challenge that happens in October every year. If you're on Instagram, I'm sure you've heard of it, but I also put all the links I have to information about that in the description box in case you want to take a look at it. And just a disclaimer, I am not a professional artist in any way, shape or form. I'm an amateur and this was just for fun. So these are not like fully rendered entire paintings like some people do. This was something I tried to do to keep it sustainable so that I could finish it. So in a certain way, I guess this is kind of a more a realistic uh, Inktober sketchbook flip through. Before we get started, this is the sketchbook that I used. It's got watercolor paper and it's an A5 size, I think. I got it from Amazon. Um, I don't remember the brand, but I will put a link to it in the description as well. So the first prompt was backpack. So a lot of these pictures, especially in the beginning, I got a reference photo from the website Unsplash. I'll also put a link for that. It's got um, royalty free reference photos. You can use them any way you want. You can even use them commercially if you want to. So I haven't really figured out my art style or what my favorite media is yet. So at the beginning, I was working a lot with this line and wash technique, which is when you do a, uh, you do a pen outline sketch and then you do watercolor over it so this is the first one and i'm pretty happy with it i like how it turned out i i like to use purple for the um shadows when i do this kind of line and wash and i learned this from watching sketching scotty on youtube so i'll also link to his channel if you'd like some easy tutorials about this kind of style all right i'm moving on so day two, the prompt was discover. Now this one was a little less successful in my opinion. I really don't like how the, um, the shadow around the outside looks really muddy and weird. So I like the interior part of this drawing. So it was a photo somewhere in Italy, I think, or France, somewhere in Europe, where somebody was looking down through an alley and they saw this little scooter and I thought that was a cute little picture. As you'll also notice as we go along, my interpretation of the prompts gets looser and looser as time goes on as well. Number three, day number three, this prompt was boots. So I just put the word boots into Unsplash and I got the picture of this person sitting down on a stoop with some Timberland boots on, so I did this one as well. Oh, and that reminds me, if you wanna see the um, time-lapse videos of me drawing all of these, um, that's in my shorts on YouTube and also on my uh, visual arts Instagram. And uh, I think this one, I really like how this one looks and it was fun to do the splatters. I enjoy doing the splatters too. His proportion is off a little bit, the legs are too short. Um, but I actually did this freehand. I didn't do any sketch ahead of time. So I just went in there with a pen. So based on that information, <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that one. All right, moving along. All right, so this day number four, um, the prompt was exotic. And so the first thing I thought of was like exotic birds or flowers, plants, tropical things. So I thought of doing a bird of paradise because they're so colorful. This is a tropical plant if you've never seen it before. If you want to know any of the materials I use, like which brand of watercolor or pens, I'll also link all of that in the description too, if you would like to know. Um, this one was really fun. I really enjoyed this one. And I did a little bit of um, cross hatching to do the shading first when I did the, the um, pen sketch and then I came over top with the brightest possible colors that I had in my uh, watercolor and then I used an acrylic paint pen to do the highlights. I actually liked it better before I did that but you know this is experimentation so got to try things out and I really enjoyed this. I was really going for kind of like a 1990s color scheme with this one so I think that turned out pretty good. 
All right, moving on. Day number four, or sorry, day number five is binoculars. And I didn't really want to draw a picture of traditional binoculars, but I thought of these kind of binoculars that you put used to put coins in in cities so you could zoom into the landscape. So this is New York City. I don't know what building this is on top of, but it's on top of a building somewhere. And again, I kind of wanted to follow along again with that 1990s like neon color scheme. And the pack of watercolors I have had a couple neon paints in it. So and this is the one that I went for. This took me forever though, because I did so much detail on all these buildings. And so this was one of the longer days that I had. And after this day, number five, I kind of realized that I needed to make sure that I didn't do something that was gonna take up too much time because I needed to do this every single day. I didn't actually do these on every single day. I did them all between October 1st and October 31st, but there are days where I did more than one and days I didn't do any because I got behind and I caught up and things like that. So uh, these paints were a little bit weird. I've never used neon colored watercolor paints before and their, their consistency is different than the normal ones. I don't know if it's because they have like white in them in order to make them bright and vibrant, but something was different. They didn't quite flow the same. So just a FYI, something I'm learning with materials is depending on the pigment, it can really change the viscosity and the texture and stuff like that. Okay, so what are we doing here? Yeah, I didn't take these out ahead of time. Some of these are gonna have parchment paper over them because I used pencil or colored pencil and I didn't want them to rub off on the next page or get smudged so some of these have parchment paper on them. All right this is the first day that I moved on to a different medium. This is day six the word was trek and I just got some colored pencils in the mail and I wanted to try them out. So I did this kind of cross hatchy shading on this little donkey. And I had in my mind those, the donkeys they use for trekking like in South America, I guess, or even in the United States in the South, sometimes people will use donkeys for trekking. And I thought he was really cute. So I just did the outline and the line, the lines for the saddle and everything with a brush pen. And then as an experiment, I came in with colored pencils and I just started doing like cross hatching over top of each other over and over again, different colors. I used blue um, for the shading, for the shadows. And uh, it was looking pretty rough for a while there, but I think he turned out okay in the end. Yeah, so this was a total experiment. I just wanted to see what I could do with the colored pencils that I got. And I think he turned out cute. And then day seven was passport. One, one more line and wash of a traditional kind of urban sketching style of line and wash. For the prompt passport, I didn't really want to draw a passport or like luggage or like other things that go with traveling like that. And I'm pretty comfortable with urban sketching or, or sketching buildings, things like that, uh, cityscapes. So I decided, let me look up a passport agency that has an interesting building and I'll do that instead. So after I Googled that, I found out that Buffalo, New York has this nice kind of historic looking building for their passport agency. So that's what I did here. All right, moving along. So a couple places you'll see in this journal or in this sketchbook that I have this sticky um, craft paper covering over things. This where I have attempted something and it has gone awry in a, such a way that I could not fix it. And I didn't want to waste pages. So some of them you'll see that I do another drawing over top of that. Sometimes it's because I wanted to use the brown paper and sometimes it's because I just was covering up a failed attempt. So, and it's not because I'm, you know, uh, embarrassed about it. Like this is very <laughs> much a learning situation and that's why I'm showing it to you. It's just, I don't like to waste pages, so I didn't come back to this one for some reason though, to redo it. 
So this is day number nine and the prompt was sun. Again, I didn't really feel like doing kind of landscape or a sunset or anything like that. Um, and so I was thinking about sun deities and in Egyptian um, mythology or ancient Egyptian religion, um, the sun god is a falcon or some kind of bird of prey, a hawk or a falcon. So I decided I'd do that using pen. And then to give it a nice contrast, a nice pop of color, I put the sun behind it with orange um, watercolor. Okay. And this is day, what, eight? Oh, we're out of order. Okay. That was day nine. Yeah, that was day nine. Day eight was hike and I was thinking of doing a portrait. Now, uh, I think this portrait is pretty bad. <laughs> it's one of the first, first portraits I had done. Um, so I did try this one several times. And I ended up with this. It's fine. I did it with a pencil. Um, I went too far. I worked on it too long and it got all muddied up and weird around her mouth. Um, but anyway, this is Alma Wagon or Wagon. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But she was the first official woman wilderness guide in the United States in the very early 20th century. So I want to say like in the 1910s sometime. I don't remember exactly. And so I wanted to try doing a portrait and that's where I got. Um, I do a couple more port- I do another one more portrait. Yeah, later on. It's slightly better than this, but um, I actually started doing the 100 heads challenge in the middle of October too. So hopefully when I'm completely done with that, which will probably take me like a year or so, I can do a sketchbook tour of that too. That's a challenge where you just draw 100 heads. You're supposed to do it in 10 days in the original challenge and I am absolutely not going to do that. Um, but it's just to practice your portraiture. And actually I'm, I've gotten a lot better already. I think I'm up to like 15 or 16 now. All right. Tea. Okay, now this is a day that I struggled with. So again, I tried a couple different um, ideas for day 10. The prompt was nomadic. I was thinking about like nomadic animals that like roam and I didn't really like that. <laughs> so I started thinking about like people living in campers, that kind of nomadicness. So, um, but it was rough this day. I kind of phoned it in. I did not record myself even like drawing this. I just took a picture of it at the end, but it's an old Volkswagen camper and I just did a simple pen sketch and then colored it in with a little bit of marker here and there just to give it some nice color. That's it. Kept it simple that day. This guy is a bonus sketch. He is not for any particular day. All right, day 11 was snacks. And I really love this one. This is one of my favorites in here, actually. I wanted to do something with my uh, colored pencils that was a little bit painterly looking or a little bit like impressionistic. <laughs> and I'm not very uh, adept at using color yet in terms of shading and stuff. Like I'm really comfortable doing shading in black and white, like with black pen or pencil or something, but not using color for it. So I really like it. I like the colors. It is obvious what it is. It is brie, cheese, and grapes. So I actually really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed doing it. It was really fun and I like how it turned out. And then day 12, I also like this one a lot too. This one was the word remote. As you might have noticed, the, the prompts for this year kind of had a theme going. They were all kind of to do with adventuring and trekking and hiking and those kind of things it seems like so um, I thought about working remote since we all have a lot of experience with that now after COVID happened um, so I found an unsplash reference image of this kind of kettle and a teacup and a computer just sitting on somebody's coffee table and I did that with pen uh, almost completely with pen and then at the very end I used a white colored pencil to do the highlights and I really like how this is. I, if you haven't been able to tell already, I really like contrast. I like high contrast so 
I really like to use like black and white for things because you get that nice differentiation. Okay, this was an interesting experiment for me. Um, day 13 was Horizon, and I found this picture of people on a beach with this really kind of interesting perspective and distance. And I wanted to do it with color pencil. And so I'm actually, I mean, this isn't a visual style that I'm probably going to return to a lot. And But I really had fun doing it. The way that I did the shadows and um, how I drew these teeny tiny little people, just an impression of people really works. You can tell what they are. So I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, so this was fun. This colored, um, or this watercolor paper is not the best surface for colored pencils because it's got a little too much tooth to it, a little too much texture. And so you get this very, I mean, maybe you want that textured look, in which case watercolor paper is good. But if you want things to be smooth with pencil or colored pencil, watercolor paper has got a little too much uh, texture on it for that. Day 14 was Rome. And I went back to that idea that I was thinking about using for the previous one, which was an animal that is like nomadic or roams. And so this is a, an American bison. Um, and that's what I think of when I think of Rome. I think of like the West Prairie of the United States. So I found a reference photo of a bison. And again, this was another day where I didn't have a lot of time. I didn't have a lot of motivation. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get my brush pen, do it fast, and that's all I'm going to do. So... And the reason it's in this weird box is that I got, I was doing, the box wasn't there. I was <laughs> doing the bison with my pen and I got to the butt end of the bison and I, it was cut off on the photo. And then I realized I don't really know how to finish this because I can't see it in the reference. So I just put a box around it. <laughs> okay. Now we're getting into some more interesting experimentation um, that I was doing. So day 15 was guidebook and there's a lot of book related prompts. There was like guidebook, passport, journal is one of them. And I just didn't want to draw anything literal for those. So um, if you've seen some of my other videos, I, in my, in my reading journal, I really enjoy doing um, themes and drawings that look like those old botanical guidebooks that have all the the nice illustrations of like trees and flowers and mushrooms and things like that. So I went back to one of my favorite uh, subjects, which is the California poppy. And I did an illustration how I thought it might look inside of a botanical guidebook. So that's what I went for here. Again, I just used colored pencil. Um, this took a really long time. If you've ever used colored pencil, you'll know that you have to do it like very thin layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. So this is another one, like that city image that like took me a really long time. I don't do any more colored pencil uh, drawings like this in the rest of this, uh, in this style where it's all shaded like this because it just takes too long for an everyday challenge. Um, but it was fun to try. I had, this is the, probably the first time I've ever done if, yeah, this is the first time I had ever done a full like colored pencil sketch that was like completely shaded in with colored pencil. So, and trying to look a little bit realistic and not impressionistic. <laughs> now we're moving on to day 16. So we're about halfway through the challenge at this point. And I was starting to want to experiment with some more different ways of doing things. And I, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> I would not call myself a gamer, but sometimes there are specific games that I get like super duper obsessed with. And one of them is Kentucky Route Zero. It's kind of an obscure game. Not that many people have played it, but the next three of these pictures are kind of fan art from that video game. And because the art style is absolutely gorgeous. In fact, let me pop some pictures up over here in this corner now that I'm thinking of it so you can see what the art style looks like because it's so pretty. Um, so this is a picture of a house and the, the, the prompt for that day was grungy and there's kind of an, I don't know what made me connect it to this game, but, uh, there's like an old, you know, an old kind of slightly dilapidated house in the game. And so I wanted to do that and I thought it would be fun to, instead of 
using the watercolor to color everything in. Just do a blob, an interesting textured color in the background, just as the background of the picture, and then do all the pen and marker on top. And so that's what I did here. And this is all with a brush pen and then a little bit of white acrylic or gel pen, one or the other, to do this lamp at the end. So this is where <laughs> my uh, interpretation gets super loose of the prompt. Um, so this is journal, <laughs> is the prompt for this day. And I just had no interest in that prompt, so I stretched this uh, big time. So in the game, there are a certain part, there's a certain part where there's a bunch of like computer monitors stacked up on top of each other or televisions. I don't remember which one it is. And I was thinking, you know what? You can journal on paper, but you can also journal electronically on your computer. So this fits the prompt and that's what I did. <laughs> so this is like a bonfire of technology. And that was really fun to do. Again, it's the same thing, watercolor first in the background and then bold dark pen and a little bit of white gel pen over top. And I really like this kind of illustration style. It was really fun. In day 18, the prompt was drive. And the very first scene of Kentucky Route Zero takes place at this Equus Oils gas station that has this really interesting design with this big horse. Um, so I'm, I thought that's perfect. That's what I'm going to do for that one. So um, this is kind of a recreation of a screenshot of the game where the other ones are a little bit more interpretive. This one is a little bit more literal to the actual game. And I really like how it turned out. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this kind of stylized shading and everything. So I had a good time with that. And moving on. Okay. So I continued with my theme of um, video game fan art with some other games that I really like. So this was inspired by the game Firewatch, where you play a person who is the person that stays inside the fire tower and looks out for fires. So I don't know, they probably have this in other countries too. In the United States, in some of our federal lands and parks and things, there will be these uh, fire towers because there are certain areas of the United States where wildfire is very common and it's very dangerous. And I don't know if it happens as much as it used to, but it used to be that somebody would stay all summer in these and you know keep an eye on things from high up. And if they spotted anything that looked like fire, they would call it in. So this is just watercolor layers. So I started from the back, did yellow, waited for it to dry, did the next layer of mountains, waited for that to dry, did the next layer, etc. towards the front. And, um, and then I used brush pen to do this final front layer. I don't know, it's hard to see in this lighting probably, of black. So for this tower and then the very front layer of trees right there. And in general, when you're doing depth in like a landscape or something, things should get darker as they get closer. So I did do that, but also things in the front should be warmer and things in the back should be cooler. So I have the color contrast kind of backwards, but that's okay. And then moving on here, this is day 20. And I believe this is my final video game homage. This is from a, a scene from the game Control, which is a very uh, surrealist, game. Again, it has gorgeous artwork, so I might put some on one of these sides of the screen for you to see. I really enjoy the art form of video games. Um, and so this is a very surreal image of this uh, ship's anchor kind of floating in the air. And how I did this one was the watercolor in the background this blue and pink first, then that dried, and then I did more watercolor with the gray around the edge. And then I came in with a dark colored pencil to do the shading to make it look three-dimensional around this edge, and then to do the black in the middle as well. Now we're moving on to day 21. The prompt was rhinoceros, and I did not want to draw an actual rhinoceros, so I thought of a rhinoceros beetle instead. So that's what I did. And I did the, the similar style as I did on those previous ones. 
I did a background wash of watercolor. I picked this purple color. In hindsight, probably should have made it a little bit lighter so that there was a little more contrast with the black in the background, but that's fine. And I did a pencil sketch first of the sky, then I did the watercolor over it, and then I did the pen, the black pen, and then I put a white paint pen as the highlights. And I really like this. I really enjoy drawing insects for some reason. They're very, they've got a lot of interesting textures. They're shiny, they're smooth, they're bumpy. This guy was like hairy underneath. That's another one of my favorites in this whole book, actually. So here is the other portrait that I did in this book. It's an improvement over the first portrait. Still, I can find a lot of problems with it. <laughs> uh, especially, I have a lot of trouble with eyes. I'm really working on eyes right now. For whatever reason, eyes are hard and um, that's what gives me the most difficulty thus far in my journey with doing portraits. <laughs> I do believe this is recognizable as who it's supposed to be if you know who it is. So this is John Waters. The prompt this day was camp. So instead of doing campy, like camp, like camping, I wanted to go a different way. And so I did camp, like the aesthetic, I guess. Camp is very hard to describe. It has its roots in queer culture. You know, drag queens are camp. Like John Waters movies are like the epitome of camp. So it's one of those things where like, I can't explain it to you, but I know it when I see it. But if you want to know more about camp, look it up because I am not uh, eloquent enough to explain it to you. <laughs> Anyhow, this is just a blue colored pencil sketch. And I did a regular pencil sketch to start out with underneath. And then I went over top of it with the blue colored pencil and, you know, pretty happy with it based on where I am at in my journey of learning how to do portraits. Okay. Ooh, yes. Now we're moving on to four more days here where I decided that I wanted to, again, get more graphic and kind of illustration-y with these. So I cut up these rectangles of black paper and I used acrylic paint pen. I really love old kind of mid-century buildings and signs and things. Um, and this is actually in San Jose, California, nearby where I live. I just happened to be in that part of town and I saw this old sign and I took a picture of it because I really liked the shape of it and how it looked. I didn't use the actual colors. It's a different color in real life. And it turned out that this is kind of like a little bit of a well-known uh, landmark or like people who grew up here, which I did not, I moved here as an adult, um, know this company a lot. They used to have like interesting jingles on their <laughs> local commercials and things. So I didn't even know that, but so yeah, this is just um, pink acrylic paint pen, white acrylic paint pen, and then black fine liner to do the shading. And that was rust was the, t uh, the prompt for that day. Here we have another stretch on the prompt. <laughs> Day 24 was expedition, and I thought you could take an expedition to a desert, and in a desert you will see a cacti, so, or you will see cacti. I love cacti, as you may know if you have already watched some of my other videos on this channel. Um, I love mushrooms, and I love cacti. So um, this was really fun to do. I found a nice like close-up image of a cactus, and I put down the green acrylic paint first, I came in with the dots with a black pen to do a little bit of shading, and then I did the white for the spines over top. Day 25 was Scarecrow, and this is one of my favorites too. So I did all this white first before I put the red, and then I came in with the red, and that actually defined the outline of the crow in kind of a negative space kind of way, so that was actually really fun to do. And then I just came in with this a red acrylic paint pen in a kind of a scratchy way to do the background. And I really like the final result of that. Day 26, the prompt was camera. So I got literal with this one. I found a picture of an old, I think it's a 1960s or 70s model of a Kodak camera. So it's just a fun little illustration of a camera. I had a good time doing it. 
and I was, you know, we're ending, we're getting close to the end of the month, so I was getting tired at this point. <laughs> so I am comfortable with this kind of illustration style. It's a little easier for me to do. Okay. So this guy, I, I, I don't know why I decided to do this. This took forever. <laughs> it looks great, but it took forever. So I found this reference photo of this kind of drone shot of the uh, Golden Gate Bridge from above. And I did the uh, watercolor, grayish, bluish watercolor first to represent kind of the, the water of the bay, the San Francisco Bay, and like the fogginess of it. And then we just had to come in with a bajillion lines using a ruler to get this perspective correct. So it took a very long time because I'd be very meticulous and get everything straight and in the right place in order to correctly convey the perspective. And this is, um, sorry, this is pen, regular fine liner pen and acrylic paint pen to do the bridge. Day 29 was Navigator. Again, we got a little bit loose with the prompt here. First, I was thinking about navigation, like ancient navigation, navigating by the stars, using like a sextant kind of thing. And I actually did see some other people doing nice illustrations of sextants, but then I just, I had just done this one over here and I didn't want to do like something that took a lot of angles and like precision to draw. So I, this is technically, I guess not navigating, it's navigating the year. It's navigating time because Stonehenge, they think, was some kind of calendar, perhaps. So I decided to do Stonehenge with colored pencil. And so I found a reference image that was at a solstice, so the sun was perfectly lined up, um, shining through right there. And then day 28, the prompt was Jumbo. I just wanted to draw some mushrooms. That's it. <laughs> and mushrooms are not generally jumbo but i decided i would put a little teeny mouse and to him they're jumbo so that's what i did and this is just a cole erase color race color pencil from prisma color so it's an erasable colored pencil i don't find them to actually be any more erasable than most any other colored pencil maybe a little bit but I don't think that was really worth it, the purchase, because I don't think that they're that much different than normal colored pencils. So in case you were wondering about that. But I like this color. Again, I want to do something quick, fast, easy. And we want, we were just, you know, finishing things up at this point. Okay, day 29 was a violin. I was not excited to draw a violin <laughs> and I couldn't think of any other way of interpreting that that would make it into something that I was excited to draw. So uh, I was looking at reference photos and I found one of just the neck of the violin or the head, I don't know. And I thought that actually that would be more interesting. And so I have been doing a lot of sketching with graphite pencil um, in my other sketchbooks because I'm really trying to learn how to draw better and working on value and perspective and form. And so actually this is a really great practice for that because these pegs need to look like they're sticking out in the right directions. Yeah, so I just did an under sketch uh, with the same pencil to make sure I kind of got things spaced out and in the right place and the proportion close to correct. And then I just came in with a lot of shading and I, well, oh, now I remember. This is the first time I used a blending stump and I still don't know how to use a blending stump correctly because I've never done it before. This is a blending stump. It is just some paper that's been compressed into the shape. And when you're doing it with graphite pencil, you use this to like smudge it into a more uniform. So this was like lines at first and then I smudged it with a blending stump. Oh yeah, that's day 30. Well, these are out of order again, sorry. This was, okay. Stonehenge was 29. Jumbo was 28. <laughs> uh, 30 is violin. So the last day is landmark. I wanted to go for another sign because I like that previous sign that I did. 
So I looked up kind of Route 66, old historical Route 66 stuff, and I found this one uh, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the United States. Route 66, if you're not American, is a famous historical highway. It goes all the way across the United States. Um, so it's super long. A lot of it is not really used much anymore, but back in the mid-century, that was one of the main ways that you would drive across the United States. And so there were a lot of like tourist type places along that old uh, highway. But it's really interesting bit of Americana, and I really like that type of thing. So this is a neon sign, and I decided to stylize it and do it with acrylic paint pen on black paper again. That is the last day of Inktober. I encourage you to try a challenge if you're looking for a way to improve your art because I really can see a difference from the beginning of this to the end. I got to experiment with a lot of things and I made a lot of progress. So, um, But don't let it stress you out. That's the problem with these challenges, these internet challenges, is that you get stuck in it and you feel like you have to make it look really good in order to show it to anybody. Don't let it stress you out. That is, That makes it not worth it anymore. <laughs> so like I said, there's things in here that I don't like. I showed it to you anyway, because this is like realistic. This is how it goes. You know, there are ones that I redid because I hated it and it turned out terrible. Um, but there are other ones in here where I'm like, you know what? I don't really like it, but that's what I did. And this is where I'm at in my art journey. This is what I'm capable of doing right now. And I can look back at this in a couple of years and see how much progress I've made. So thank you so much for joining me. If this is the first time that you've been to my channel, because this is slightly different than what I usually post, um, I do a lot of drawing and art, but I do it in a journal usually on this channel. But I'm hoping to make some more art um, content in the future. Maybe some draw with me, some paint with me, things like that. So we'll see how that goes in the new year. All right, I hope you guys have a good rest of this month. Take care of yourself, drink your water, do something creative today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.